So today we're gonna to be making a white country loaf and for that, we're gonna be using a pre-ferment or an overnight sponge. And this is for everybody who asked me on my sourdough bread video, what can I do if I don't have a sourdough starter but I wanna bake a decent loaf of bread? Well, you can make this. Right, so this recipe is enough to make one loaf of bread. Now it is scalable, so you can scale it up to make more if you want. But the first step is to actually make the pre-ferment or the overnight sponge. And for that, we're gonna use 75 grams of room temperature water. And to that, I'm gonna add three grams of dried yeast. Now you can use fresh yeast if you want. In the card above, I'll link to the recipe that I've just made for bread rolls, and I used fresh yeast in that recipe. And it uses the same method of an overnight sponge. Now to this, we're now gonna add 75 grams of strong white bread flour. Mine's got a protein content of 13%. And then we just need to give it a quick stir with a spoon, pop the lid on, and we're gonna leave this out at room temperature overnight to ferment for around 12 to 18 hours. Somewhere in that window is the sweet spot. So temperature is obviously one of the key components here and I can tell you that my kitchen's 28 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if your kitchen's a lot hotter than this, then obviously you're gonna need to slow this fermentation process down. You can use the fridge just to pop the brakes on if needed. And obviously if your kitchen's a lot colder, then this process is gonna take longer. But this is something you're gonna have to experiment with depending on the conditions that you've got. Right, so here we are the next day and my poolish, otherwise known as a pre-fermentation, has been going for 13 hours. And during that time, it's been through a period of rising and falling and now there's just lots of broken bubbles on the surface and now it's time to build our main dough. Now in my bowl, I'm adding 220 grams of room temperature water and then 12 grams of sea salt. Give that a quick stir with a spoon to make sure it's dissolved. And then we can add in 125 grams of our poolish, not all of it, just 125 grams. And then we're gonna follow up with 375 grams of strong bread flour. As I said, mine's got a protein content of 13%. And then we can give that a quick mix with a spoon. And then I like to wet my hands and then get that involved. And the idea here is just to make sure that everything's really well combined. We're not looking for a smooth dough at this stage. Just make sure everything's really well combined. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is really in answer to your questions on my sourdough bread video, which by the way, I'll link in a card at the top and also in the description. But you know, everybody asks me, what do I do if I don't have a sourdough starter? And of course, not everybody does have one. Now, while we're not gonna get a sourdough loaf, obviously, because we're not using a starter, we won't have that exact flavor or texture. What we do get from this process is a damn good country loaf. You get a wicked, crispy, crackly crust on this with a really nice, soft, crumb on the inside and the recipes are virtually identical. I mean, the method is exactly the same. We've just swapped out the starter for the pre-fermentation and I think there's about 30 grams difference in the amount of water used. Okay, so once everything's well mixed, let's cover that with a bag. We're gonna leave it out at room temperature on the work surface for 20 to 30 minutes just to let that flour get hydrated by the water. Right, so here we are 25 minutes later, and as you can see already, the dough's already starting to build some strength, and that's thanks to the poolish or the pre-fermentation that we use to make this main dough. Now all we need to do is give the dough a bit of a workout or a quick knead for two to three minutes just to make sure everything really is well mixed and there's no dry spots in the dough. We can form it into a ball, pop it back into our bowl, cover it, leave it out at room temperature to prove. Right, now our dough's had its main, its bulk proof, we're now gonna shape it ready for the final proof. Now, not everybody's got bread baskets, so I'm gonna prove this using a tea towel or a cloth and just a normal bowl. So the first thing you wanna do is flour your tea towel and then pop that inside the bowl. Now, don't be scared of using too much flour. It's better that it doesn't stick, especially if you're new to baking. And any excess flour can always be brushed off the loaf at the end. So tuck the cloth into the bowl nicely and try to minimize the amount of creases and just make sure that it fits really snugly. Now, my dough has been bulk proving for four hours. Your times are gonna be dependent, as I said before, on the temperature, you know, the conditions in your kitchen. But here you can see it's proved really nicely, nice and springy to the touch, and it feels nice and gassy on the inside. 
Now we can get our dough turned out onto our work surface and shaped into a ball. I like to pick the dough up in the center and then roll it over on itself, turn it 90 degrees and repeat. But whichever way works for you, the idea is that we've got a nice tight ball with some really good surface tension over the top of it. And then we can dust that surface with flour, turn it over, you can give the seams a quick pinch closed if you need to, and then gently pop it into our bowl with our tea towel. We're gonna to cover this with a plastic bag and we're gonna leave it again at room temperature to prove. My dough's ready, it's been proving for the last 30 minutes, and as you can see, when I push it with my finger, it springs back. It doesn't feel like it's gonna collapse, so it's not over proof. Now before I turn this out I'm going to take this cloche and I'm going to mist it with water. This is going to sit over the bread for the first 20 minutes of the bake and that water is just going to help create some steam. Flour the top of your dough and then gently turn it out onto your bread peel, a piece of parchment paper or whatever you're going to use to transfer this to the oven. Now this piece of dough I'm going to actually snip with a pair of scissors and that's what's going to allow that dough to expand and open up as it bakes. And in the B-roll you'll see one that I just slice normally with a razor blade. Now this is going to bake in the centre of a preheated oven with a breadstone that's been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. For the first 20 minutes of the bake it's going to be covered with this cloche and then after the first 20 minutes we're going to remove it and it's going to continue to bake in the oven for around 30 minutes until we've got that nice dark colour and the crust is really well developed. Well, that's it from me today, guys. Ah, don't forget, if you give this a go, then let me know in the comments what you think. Drop me a tag over on Instagram if you upload any pics. But for now, a huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned. Can't get you out of my mind. You're still, still, still with me all the time.